How come four years later, I can still recall a line spoken from a very short and simple anime series, but the show itself still lingers and is recalled even years afterwards? Why does the sight of a sliced pineapple can bring up such strong emotions? What was the key to this open ending that has left me remembering it for so long? In narrative theory, Puckett argues the plot of a story based upon Aristotle's definition is, in other words, the aesthetic arrangement of actions that took place in a real or imagined time into an ordered and organic form, beginning, middle, end, that either reveals or in fact produces those actions as meaningful. The narrative itself is made up of these structured elements, and in this video we will be breaking down why the end of 91 days works so well, what makes up this open end for it to be so very satisfying to us. Angelo has reached his goal, has achieved his vengeance on the Venetti family that has caused his family's murder, but the cost is very great. He has killed his best friend to achieve this goal, and now he has no plan or purpose for his life afterwards. Nero's statement in an early episode echoes this when he says, so I guess it's up to me to give him a reason to live. But Angelo doesn't feel any different. He hasn't found a purpose or this reason to live. He confesses it was all for nothing this vengeance. All of this bloodshed has amounted to nothing. Therefore, when the end of a show arrives and it is possible to interpret the ending scene, though it's an open end, one of the interpretations is that Nero shoots Angelo. In this instance, Angelo is a picturesque tragic hero where the story ends on his death, his untimely tragic death. And the story of these two characters ends on these bittersweet emotions of sympathy and sadness. Since as an audience we know Angela has done all of this, has killed for the sake of this vengeance, but ultimately has still not found a reason to live because gaining vengeance does not compensate the loss for his family. Nothing could ever compensate that. So it's only after all of his bloodshed that he realizes this which is a very tragic end for the heroic protagonist of this show. Aristotle defines a good tragedy according to this literary website as to evoke feelings of fear and pity in the audience since he saw these two emotions as being fundamental to the experience of catharsis, the process of releasing strong or pent-up emotions through art. Therefore, 91 Days pulls out this mixing of emotions that are satisfying to us as an audience, which Aristotle calls catharsis. Can anything but the word catharsis describe this tragic open end to Angelo's journey? Emotions are evoked at the bittersweet open end and through the audience knowing that Angelo has reached his goal at a great cost to his own morality by killing his best friend in the process and ultimately not gaining any understanding of himself through this pursuit of vengeance. If emotions are a key portion to our attachment to this ending, then there is a specific quality an ending must reach in order to move all audience members and that is... <laughs> The lead up to the end of the show presents the viewer with the montage scene while the ending music plays in the background. A fairly romantic sounding soundtrack, if I might add in briefly, the lyrics of a full song that we don't hear but if you listen to the song on your own literally translate to, farewell my friend, rain or shine, fate is unchanging, with a kiss hidden in betrayal, sleep for even the wind will have stopped by dawn. This song sounds sentimental and pulls on your heartstrings as we witness stills of the two making their way through their journey to the beach, presumably Florida's beach, by the magazine Angelo was looking at earlier. The montage scene works because it echoes the previous journey they have taken on the earlier road trip with familiar scenes of eating together at a diner, a comedic scene of Angelo being shit at driving and being unfazed about it, which is a running gag in the show, and new moments such as driving so long they have to change a tire, and finally the shot of Angelo asleep against the window while Nero continues driving. The audience can see a long time has passed in these scenes, in that day and night has occurred many times, and in that they needed to change a tire obviously means time has passed, but what the audience gets from these montages is a sense of nostalgia or sentimental value to what has happened over the course of the series. These two characters who have slowly 
eventually got in to know one another despite lingering animosity, but ultimately both sticking together due to their similarities. So the audience feels a sentimentality for these two characters that have basically put aside this lingering animosity due to their own previous experiences of going on this road trip together in the past, and the fact that even though they despise each other and basically I feel like both in their minds are thinking of killing one another, they still have so many similarities and similar deep sadness over the deaths of each of their families at the cost of the other. So they're both literally feeling similar emotions in the sense that they're both mourning the losses of each of their families at the cost of a single person murdering them. The audience is reminded of the relationship's progression through the series and how despite all of these terrible occurrences that have recently transpired, the two retain an air of normalcy between them that is familiar as well as welcoming to the audience. <laughs> In Peter Lamarck's book, The Philosophy of Literature, he states, To speak of what a work is about thematically is to speak of a unifying thread that binds together incident and character in an illuminating way. The reason that this ending moves us is its relation to the general themes of the anime. As I mentioned earlier, in episode 11, Nero says that Angelo is like an empty shell. I'll give Avilio something to live for. And in the English dub version, he says, the guy's problem is indifference, so I guess it's up to me to give him a reason to live. In both versions, Nero himself is saying he'll be taking the responsibility to help Angelo live on after killing his best friend Cortillo and help give a man some purpose. Though the dub version sounds a little more more casual and that he guesses he'll have to do this, sort of like he feels obligated to give something in return to Angelo, who has helped him so dearly and attached to him. What is ironic about this scene is that as an audience, we already know the reason Angelo lives, which he reveals to Cortillo at an earlier episode when he says in the dub that avenging them is the only thing my life is worth, and in the English subversion, if I abandon my revenge, I lose my reason for living. The English dub equates his entire life's purpose to vengeance, while the subbed version specifies that if he doesn't reach his full revenge, he won't be able to live anymore. So it works as an ultimatum that he will literally die if he does not at least complete his vengeance plot. The implications for both of these versions, though, is that Angelo's reason for living is his obligation to his family, specifically to avenge their unfair deaths at the hands of the Venetti family. Therefore, despite reaching his so-called goal of revenge in the final episode. The series incorporates the theme of living and what it means to live. Angelo has lost his entire life's purpose because, as he reveals at the campfire, he doesn't feel any more complete or content even after reaching his ultimate goal of avenging his entire family's murder. Obviously, this revelation of Angelo frustrates and pisses off Nero because the death of his family and friends has amounted to nothing on Angelo's end. All this bloodshed has basically resulted in nothing of actual value for Angelo, and that makes Nero so livid because his entire family, best friend is dead, everyone's dead, and it hasn't even amounted to anything. Their conversation by the campfire doesn't give us a clear answer to why Angelo lives, but Nero, as promised, as if waiting to tell Angelo this since he thought about the matter, tells Angelo as they walk down the beach this iconic line that I can still recall even four years later, which is so poetic and meaningful to the theme of the entire show, which is, you don't need a reason to live. You just live. Nero provides Angelo a simple solution. Living is just that. You live. You breathe, you wake up, and you go to bed and do it all over again. That is literally what it, it is broken down to. You don't need to complicate things or find some greater life purpose. Sometimes just living your life, enjoying the small things in life, is enough. You don't have to have some crazy dream or life goal to live. Sometimes people just live, and that's it. And that's enough of a reason to continue living, because every life is valuable in however way we live it, even without grand purposes. So this simple wording to what Angelo has been mulling over the entire course of a show leaves the audience content in that we ourselves can now understand a new way to look at our own lives, as well as for Angelo to look at his life in the future. The confession that follows from Angelo of 
how he didn't want to kill Nero fully wraps up the series in a bow. It answers all of our thematic questions and gives the audience closure on the loose ends of a series that we were unaware of. Till this point, Angela has been a sort of unreliable narrator in that as an audience, we don't know how much of what he's expressing is genuine or a performance put on for the sake of duping the Venetis. But in this instance, we know to an extent that the companionship, the friendship, and perhaps even the subtextual romantic undertones the series kept showing and how Nero and Angelo interacted with one another was not completely fake. That there was care and some respect Angelo felt genuinely between the two of them that was actually prevalent. Why else could Angelo not kill him unless he had gone attached to Nero? There was no other explanation than an emotional attachment. So in this final scene between them, where he admits he doesn't want to kill Nero, reveals to us he likely was lying earlier about his reasoning for keeping Nero alive for some petty reason for Nero to suffer just as greatly as he did, where in reality the truth is that he simply will not kill Nero because he doesn't want to. He no longer has this animosity or vengeance against him. This reveal rounds the overall theme of how empathy for others is even possible for those you hate the most when they become humanized. He doesn't see Nero as a villain or a bad person because he's lived with him, spent time around him, and thus sees him as a regular person. He just gets to know Nero as a human being rather than as this like villainous figure that he vaguely re recalls from his childhood. He had an attachment to him, and that was his reasoning for not killing Nero. Thematic closure is the key in terms of linking, lingering answering questions, and tying a knot in terms of thematic themes of a series so that the audience reaches the optimal amount of contentment and closure. <laughs> Ending where you began. The last scene between Nero and Angelo mirrors the start of the show. Nero is once again pointing a gun at Angelo's back, echoing the theme of a series where violence in the mob is circular. It is a never-ending cycle of violence destroying themselves over and over and over again. To end where the show starts off is a very beautiful way to call back to the start of a series and wrap up the general plot in a way that feels complete since we are watching a familiar scene but in a new and different context. We see this scene after each character has gone through their own respective journeys and personal growth throughout the narrative. So ending where you begin not only works visually since it is an anime series, but it works structurally to end the show with the premise of a simple choice whether to pull the trigger or to not pull the trigger. The same dilemma, but with the characters after their journey has been fulfilled, thus making this decision much more loaded and worthwhile to the audience. The audience can now question, after this entire journey has been accomplished, will the same outcome occur or will it not? That is the question of this open end. <laughs> Why does the sight of a pineapple can evoke such emotions out of a viewer when you see this ending scene? The key is in the can's meanings. Otherwise, it is simply a can of sliced fruit. It's because the symbol of that can evokes a sentimental meaning to the audience who has watched this show. There is an intention to this symbol, an intended association that the viewer is expected to make at the sight of this visual. The pineapple can symbolize both Angelo himself and the happy times they spent together on the road trip. It is a literal reminder and or memento of Angelo that brings a smile to his face. This tugs on the viewer's heartstrings, especially after the resounding gunshot sound in which, as an audience, we can either think Nero has shot Angelo, killing him, or whether he has missed the shot but has left Angelo behind, and that in either case, this is a sentimental farewell between the two leads. And this farewell is propelled by the visual symbol of the memorable sliced pineapple can from their wacky adventures together on the road. By this I mean there are multiple endings a viewer can each come to watching the same sequence of animation. A masterful open ending can nail the ambiguous nature of where the characters end up. We don't know if Nero will survive. We don't know if Angelo is dead because we do not see his body nor any blood. The answers are unclear and the evidence is wiped away by the shore of the waters so that deciphering any possible answers is impossible. The shots of the shooting itself are cut up so that it is unclear if Angelo was truly shot. We hear the 
shot and see the smoke of the gun, but we do not see a body or hear a body fall down after being shot. Instead, we see Nero driving away from a beach past a man who has been tailing them the entire time since the Venetti family's destruction. The possible endings I have broken down, though there could be more possibilities technically, these are the endings that a general audience member could usually come up with. So the first possible ending, Angelo is dead because he's shot and left to die on the beach. Nero escapes but lives on the run from the mob, which means he could still possibly die at the hands of the other rival family. Number two, Angelo is left alive but is killed by the man who was chasing him and Nero because he failed his mission to kill Nero for the other family. Nero is on the run and is likely going to be killed by the mafia as well in the future. And the third possible ending is the two are both alive but separated. They somehow both outlive the ghost chasing after them in order to achieve this neither of them could stay in one place for long or they would have to leave the country or change their entire identity. An optimistic viewer might see this as the the perfect end because it encapsulates Nero's argument to simply live, so perhaps they do just live and the answer is as simple as that. An open ending works for 91 days not only because it is a shorter anime show only spanning 12 episodes, but because it coincides with the overall theme of the show, where there isn't a clear answer or solution to this violence, is more violence the answer? Is that the choice Nero makes at the end to resort to what they've kept resorting to the entire series? Or did he deny that violence, changing his mind about believing vengeance through murder will truly grant him any solace when it has done nothing for Angelo, who has achieved his own vengeance? There is not a clear-cut answer because the character of Nero is a gray one. He isn't a hero and he isn't quite a villain, but a similar person to Angelo now since they both have lost their families. The ending is of uncertainty and unpredictability, a true testament of Nero's future and potentially Angelo's if he is still alive as well. One person can watch the show believing Nero hasn't changed his perspective and still believes violence is a choice he must make as his father has always taught and so he shoots Angelo in confirmation of this fact. Or another person watching this end could see it as Nero refusing to take part in the cycle of violence, having learned of its detrimental consequences and accompanied by the fact he told Angelo you just live must mean that he doesn't want Angelo to die just as much as Angelo doesn't want to kill Nero or to be the cause of Nero's death. And so he doesn't shoot believes Angelo to hit the road on his own and escape the men chasing after them that want him dead. Because realistically, if Angelo truly wanted to start anew, he couldn't do that whilst being on the run from the Mafia with Nero, who is in all likelihood going to be killed in the near future if the tenacity of a Mafia tying up loose ends is anything to go by in this series. The open ending of 91 Days works because it incorporates these elements of a tragic hero, sentimentality, a thoughtful visual symbol, and answers the theme of how to live on, while giving us an end that could mean multiple possibilities. It is an end that thrives on its lack of answers, and to this day, this ending still lingers in my mind because of all of these narrative elements. I hope you enjoyed this video in 91 days. Thank you for watching, and let me know your own thoughts in the comments.